Now I did mention that you can do exactly the same thing in Premiere. Now I happen to prefer the way that Resolve does it, but you can still do the same thing in Premiere Creative Cloud. They've had the ability to make subtitles for quite some time, and they'll do closed captions, and there are some nice things about the Adobe one which I think are better than Resolve. I just find it's easier to type stuff into Resolve. But I'll just quickly show you how you do it in Premiere. So I am just going to get my two files and drag them into Premiere. So I've got the captions I took off the internet and I've got the original file. I'm just going to make up a timeline out of it. And again, you can take those captions and just drag them onto the timeline above your video. Let's zoom in a little bit. And that's about where I start speaking, isn't it? So let's just move that across so it starts at the right place. Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training, and I'm going And it, yep, yeah, it's a mess, but I can still change them. So what I have to do is I have to load up the caption window. I'm just going to drag it into the edge so it's a nice big panel. Make sure the captions are selected, and here you can see all the different captions that I've got on the timeline, so I can start changing them. Hello! So there we are, first one done. Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training. So that's where I want that to finish. I'm just going to grab the edge of that and stop it there. And I'm going to give you a quick guide. All right, the next one is, and I'm going to give you a quick guide. So I'm going to change that to say, and I'm going to give you a quick guide. Make the start of that one start at the right place. And I'm going to give you a quick guide on how to set up Edius for the first time. Okay, and the second one, not doing too badly there. So you might notice how the subtitles themselves have imported differently on here to the way they didn't resolve. So when you've bought Edius, you'll be given a serial number. Yeah, now here, well, obviously that's completely wrong. If you ever need to stick in a new subtitle, I can just click up here and click plus and it'll add one in directly after the other one. If I want to get rid of a subtitle, I just select it and press delete. Or you can come down here to the timeline, and as long as you right-click very near the bottom of the track, don't go to the top, but go to the bottom, you can get this Add Caption option up here, and it'll put a new caption in at wherever your cursor was. The only slight difference is there that the plus will put one directly after that subtitle, the right-click and Add Caption will put it wherever your mouse was, so you see it's left a little bit of a gap. Now you notice through all of this, I've been seeing the subtitles up here in the window. You might not see that because you might have to click on this little cog here and go Close Captions Enable. Now you notice I didn't have to do that. That's because Premiere is actually treating the subtitles I've imported as what they call open captions. Open captions are ones that's burnt into the video. Closed captions are ones that you can turn on and off. Actually, it's gone ahead and it's treated this thing as open captions because I've imported original file. Not a problem, because, you know, when I come to export the movie at the end of it, I'll just turn that track off and you won't see it. So they won't be burnt in. If I'd created the captions from scratch, I'd have gone to the project window and I'd have said, make me up some new captions, please. And it would have asked me, what kind of captions do you want to make? So in this case, you can see I've got lots of different sections here. Now, if I was doing this for YouTube, I'd probably choose open captions or open subtitling, probably open captions. But if you're doing it for different ways, like if you're doing it for proper closed captions in the States, you see you've got two options there, CEA 608 and CEA 708, which are basically the two standards. And obviously you're going to make up the one that matches the standard that whatever the person you're making them for wants. You've got teletext subtitles, which is the sort of things we'd use in Europe. There's Australian subtitles and so on. So there's lots of different formats. And yeah, just by bringing in this SRT file, it's automatically treated it as open captions. Once you've made up a subtitle in a particular format, you can't change it to another format. So suppose I made up a proper closed caption subtitle. And let's bung that onto the timeline. And let's start making up stuff from scratch. So the way the subtitles work here is that they're not all lots of individual files. It's one big file with lots of bits of text inside of it. Let's select this one here, go to the very first thing, and obviously I'd just type in, hello, I am David, or whatever. Then I'd go along to do the next one and say, oh, let's add the next one in. Now I'm just going to turn off the original track so we don't get confused. And now you can see I've made up these closed caption subtitles and I can't see them. If I go to the spanner here, Closed captions is off. Really want them on mush. 
Still can't see them. Why can't I see them? Well, let's check the settings for the closed captions. OK, the settings are set to be teletext, and I'm not doing teletext. I chose 708, didn't I? Oh, yep, there we are. Now I can see the subtitles. And they're looking a bit naff. All this mono type space font, they look a really bit old fashioned. Yeah, that's what they like. Now that might seem a bit of hassle compared to the way Resolve did it, because I had to get the right settings in the overlay and I had to get the right settings in here. But it is showing me that stuff. You know, if I wanted to do closed captions to a 708 standard, I want to see it like they're going to be in 708. So, you know, I've got a rough idea of how big the words are and I can divide them up into different lines and so on. And I know what it's going to look like which in Resolve it doesn't do. Resolve just basically does the one types of captions and like you can put on some settings on it but they won't necessarily make it into your final file. The major difference is really that the captions inside of Premiere are basically one big file with words inside of it. I can't go to this thing here and trim it in the same way that I trim a clip which is what I can do in Resolve. I can cut bits out of the timeline so I can mark it in and out point and then extract it and you notice it's actually chopped out the subtitles that were there but now you'll notice that if I click on this part of the subtitle in the captions window I see all the subtitles if I click on that one I also see all the subtitles so again it's the sort of thing that in Premiere you'd probably do afterwards because it's more of a hassle to kind of do it as you're going along and then take stuff out so it's for those couple of reasons that really I preferred Resolve if I want to export them let's just use the original ones I am going to find them in the bin and select them make sure I've got the right ones up here and then go file export captions choose the type of format that I want so I really want to go for an SRT file decide where it's going to go and then export it and now I've got an SRT file and I can go back to YouTube back to my subtitles add new subtitles choose the language upload the file and I'll have a new set of subtitles added to my video Anyway, that's a quick run through on how I make up subtitles for YouTube using Resolve or Premiere. I hope you found it useful. Obviously, if you want to see more videos, then subscribe to my channel or visit my website www.dvctraining.co.uk or contact me on david at dvctraining.co.uk. I do training and support in the UK. I can do training over the internet. You know, we could just spend like half an hour going through something specific with you by remote control. Or we could do a whole day's worth of training in depth in Premiere or Resolve or Edius. If you're interested in any more information on that, just give me a ring on 07443512146 or send me an email or go to the website. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.